Today we gather to celebrate Wednesday and Holy Week in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And to your spirit. And brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, <coughs> raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that, by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going out to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man crippled from bed was carried and placed at the gate, the gate of the temple called the beautiful gate every day to beg for arms from the people who had entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for arms. But Peter looked intently at him and did John and said, look at us. He paid attention to them expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walk around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what has happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rise, O hearts that seek the Lord. Right. Rejoice, O hearts that seek, seek the, Lord. the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give, give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deed. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, Rejoice O hearts that seek the Lord. 
Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O heart that seeks the Lord. Look at the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servant, sons of Jacob, his chosen one. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgment prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remember forever his covenant, which he made binding for the thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia. Father, this is your blessing. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips. May you worthily and fittingly proclaim this holy gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem <coughs> called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us, while he spoke to us on the way, and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven, and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised, and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Today we listen to the Emmaus story, one of the apparitions or appearances of Jesus uh, after he rose from the dead to some of his disciples. These two disciples were not one of the twelve apostles, but other disciples who had also been following with, after Jesus. And the, 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 the story that, that St. Luke 
recounts for us is a story that, that really helps us see something very true about our Christian life. Because on this journey to Emmaus, Jesus came up to be with these two disciples early in the afternoon. But they did not recognize him. And while they were talking about all the things that had happened, about how disappointed they were, that they were hoping Jesus was the one, but now he's been put to death, and now there's these stories that he's, his body's missing, what are we to make of all of this? Jesus is with them. They don't recognize Jesus, but Jesus is with them. And I, I think St. Luke is trying to remind us that Jesus is with us too. He is always with us. That's one of the things we certainly believe about our baptism, that Jesus promised us in our baptism that he would be our friend forever, that he would walk with us forever, that he's always part of our life. He's always walking with you and with me and helping us perhaps to understand the meaning of everything that's going on to try to understand the meanings of the things that are happening in our lives, to try to understand the meaning of, of this pandemic and, and all the great changes that it's making in, in, in our everyday life. But then, when they invited him to come and stay with them, and, and Jesus said the blessing at, over their little evening meal, Jesus says this, uses the very same gestures that he used at the Last Supper, the very same gestures that he used whenever he was feeding the multitudes during his earthly ministry. He took bread and blessed it and gave it to them. And, 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 take it. and it was at that moment, it's at that moment of sharing in this, in this meal with him, that their eyes were opened and they saw who Jesus, that Jesus was there with them, this Jesus who had been with them all the time. And, that's, and that helps us understand the real value and purpose of this Eucharist. That the Eucharist has been given to us as a great gift so that, so that we can begin to see, that we can be touched, that our eyes can be opened, and we, there are these special moments when we can see that Jesus is with us all the time. And that's what makes this current situation so stressful for us, that's what makes it so different for us. Because coming to the Eucharist every week, coming to the Eucharist even for some of us every day, is a way in which our eyes are constantly made open to what Jesus is doing. But I remember back when I was in grammar school, I went to a Catholic school where, where we, we went to Mass very often. We went to Mass every Monday before school started because of the miraculous metal novenas. We went to Mass every day in October for the Rosary. We went to Mass every day in November for the poor souls. We went to Mass every day in December for Advent. Then we had a couple of weeks off and then we started going to Mass every day for Lent. And then when May came around we went to Mass every day in honor of our Blessed Mother. And then in June we went to Mass every day for the Sacred. But we were only allowed, at these daily Masses, the sisters only made arrangements for us to go home and have breakfast on First Friday. All the other days, all these other Masses, we were expected to come to Mass, ready to go right from Mass into school. And the sisters expected us to have breakfast. If you fainted at this Mass, they would be very solicitous for you for a couple of minutes. But then, when they found out that you had skipped breakfast, and then you were in hot water. So it was important that we have breakfast before we come to Mass. And, as we know, back in the 50s when I was in school, fasting for the Eucharist began at midnight. So none of these children, the 600 or 700 of us in church, none of us were able to go to Holy Communion. But we went to Mass over and over and so often. And the church reminded us, the priest would remind us, some of the sisters in class would remind us, that even though we can't receive the Eucharist because we haven't been fasting, it's important for us to ask the Lord to come into our heart. St. Thomas Aquinas talked about this, this situation that people might find themselves in where they, 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 they were coming to Mass, but they, uh, they, they weren't able to receive Holy Communion. 
And he, he, he said that the Lord understood this. He, called, he talked about spiritual communion. Even though we can't receive the blood and body of Christ sacramentally, there can be an ardent desire in our heart to welcome the Lord. And the Lord will, will respond to that ardent desire. He will come into our, our hearts. So even today, while we're far away and watching this, perhaps watching this Mass through the internet, and we're not able to receive the Lord sacramentally, it's important for us to ardently desire to welcome Him into our heart. So that the great gift that He gives us in the Eucharist, the, the, the gift that we see displayed for us so beautifully in the Emmaus story, can be true for us today. That all of us can and recognize that Jesus is always with us and he never abandons us. God bless you. <clears throat>
blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away all my iniquities and cleanse me from all of my sins. And pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for the our good and good of all his holy church. And accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up with the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed St. Joseph, our spouse, Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heir to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of us now and forever. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. And may this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. And Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Lord, grant us peace. And may the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for us protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. And behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
And let us pray. Hear us, Almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. And may God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, who, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.